Bacteria live in many parts of our coral. They live in the mucus layer, the internal gastrovascular cavity, and even in the skeleton of our coral. These bacteria are immensely helpful for the coral they live in, helping with everything from coral growth to the overall health of the coral. And microbes even help with protecting coral from warming ocean water. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Man, and this week we're talking about a paper published in Nature's Scientific Reports titled First Dynamics of Bacterial Community During Development of Acropora Humilis Larva in Aquaculture. The paper is open access, and all the details are down below in the description, so check it out if you want more details on this topic. The researchers in the paper are particularly interested in looking at what microbes are doing in the very first hours and days of a coral's life. Acropora, just like most of the coral that we keep in our reef tanks, starts its life as a tiny amorphous blob. That develops over a day or two into a little larva. It looks a lot like a tiny free-swimming flatworm at this stage. Since we know that bacteria are important to adult corals, what might be going on at this very early stage of life? Would the bacteria be different or maybe in different numbers? Where does the bacteria come from anyway? These are all great questions. We'll try to answer some of them. So we know that coral gets its microbiome, that's just the mix of bacteria that live on it, from two main sources, the parent coral colony and the, and the ocean water that it lives in. Each group of coral has its own unique mix of microbes, and it is unique enough that you can even figure out where a coral came from, given the bacteria that are living in it. As I mentioned, Bacteria helps with all sorts of processes. Forgive my Latin, but things like Vibrionales, Cyanobacteria, and Rhizioblales are thought to help with nitrogen fixation, sulfur cycling, and even photosynthesis. Rhizobiales and another bacteria called Ocean Spreales are markers of healthy coral. If you find an abundance of these bacteria, the hosting coral is likely to be doing pretty well. Yet, the life stage of the coral does impact the numbers of and the types of bacteria that are present. External factors can also impact it. For instance, if we dose something containing an antibacterial medication into our reef tank, obviously that will negatively impact the susceptible bacteria in the coral as well. So the team collected gametes from the water as Acropora humilis spawned one night in the coral reefs off the coast of Thailand. They raised them in their lab so they could look at the mix of bacteria present over time as they grew up. There were four phylum of bacteria that they found present in the coral. Proteobacteria made up about 57% of the bacteria Actinobacteria made up another 14%, Firmicutes were about 10%, and Bacteriodetes were about 8% of the bacteria present in those baby corals. Proteobacteria are gram-negative bacteria, and this phylum of bacteria includes notable things like Vibrio, Salmonella, and even Yersinia, which is responsible for the plague. In our coral, though, they're responsible for helping grab nitrogen out of the water and convert it into a version that the coral can actually use. Actinobacteria are gram-positive, and this phylum contains the Streptomyces bacteria that we use to produce all sorts of useful compounds. Things like antibacterial drugs, antifungals, and even anti-cancer drugs come from this bacterium. Firmicutes can help with photosynthesis, and to be honest, I really couldn't find much information on bacteriodetes, but it is present in sizable numbers in our coral. What's interesting is the mix of these bacteria changed significantly over just a few hours. To start, they were pretty evenly distributed, but just eight hours later, the proteobacteria vastly outnumbered the other types of bacteria. This is about the time when cell division is just getting going in the embryonic coral. A day later, around 28 hours or so into life, the mix had changed yet again, with actinobacteria starting to make a larger appearance. This is the stage in a coral's life where cell division has really started to get going, and we're heading into a proper larval shape. 
another day later, just another 24 hours later, protobacteria are back, almost to the exclusion of other bacterial types. It's really interesting that there is such a difference in the variety of bacteria in such a short period of time on and in that same coral larva. Now, some of the bacteria that grows around this time even helps with things like attaching the larval coral to a surface where it can grow and develop into an adult coral colony. This is called settlement, and it's a critical step in the life of every coral that we know about. This paper really highlights the wide variety of bacteria that live on and in our coral. When we dose an antibacterial drug in our tanks, we're potentially wiping out a huge population of beneficial bacteria along with whatever we're trying to cure. To me, that really highlights the importance of treating fish in a hospital tank rather than in our reefs, even if visually the coral isn't impacted by the medication. There is a lot more detail on the specific bacteria and even on what purpose they might be serving in the coral in the paper. I would very much recommend giving it a read. It's just a few pages long. At any rate, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a like if you did. If you would like to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel and I will catch you all next week. Have a great day. Bye.